Hi, my name is Ammar Hassain, a Microsoft MVP with over 15 years of experience working on SharePoint, Exchange, Sky for Business, Identity Solutions, and Security. I speak in international conferences like Microsoft Ignite and SharePoint Saturday, and I do courses for Pluralsight from time to time. I'm currently focused on Microsoft 365 and cybersecurity, and today I'm going to talk about how to secure your modern workplace with Microsoft 365 threat protection. You can find my supporting article about this topic on my blog here. And here is my Twitter handle if you want to connect. I'm going to talk about advanced threat protection and specifically Office 365 ATP, Windows ATP, and Azure ATP. By the way, ATP stands for Advanced Threat Protection. Then I'm going to show you how to reimagine the defense in depth concept we all used to learn about previously, and how identity becomes a new control plan. And finally, if we have time, I'm going to talk about the concept of zero trust networks. Sound interesting? Let's get started. When you start thinking about the modern workplace, you naturally start thinking about Office 365 and all the collaboration tools available like SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams. Then you quickly realize that Azure Active Directory is the identity and access management entity for Office 365. And you might need to sync your users to Azure AD. The next thing you find is that people started to download all these new Office 365 mobile apps like Planner, Teams, OneDrive, and more. And you want to protect corporate data on mobile devices, which what Intune mobile management can help you with. This is where EMS, or Enterprise Mobility and Security Services, from Microsoft is here to help you with. It helps you manage and protect your existing Office 365 investments. And finally, Windows 10 is your operating system choice as it provides many security features like PetLocker, Windows Defender, and VPS, which is virtualized based security, like credential guards and device guards. So together, Office 365, EMS, and Windows 10 are offered as Microsoft 365. But the story does not end here. If you are worried about security and your business cannot afford being hacked, due to a security incident, the Microsoft 365 offers a lot of services for you. Office 365, for example, can be extended to include Office 365 ATP service to handle zero-day attacks. EMS can be extended to provide a lot of services, like PIM, or Privileged Identity Management, a highly recommended product to provide just-in-time access for admins. There is also Identity Protection Service in Azure AD, to evaluate the user and session risk levels. Cloud App Security, or CAS service for example, can work to help you manage access to SaaS applications and finally there is Azure ATP. From the Windows 10 side, you can use Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection, which operates as an endpoint detect and response solution. Now all these advanced security features are offered under the E5 licenses of Microsoft 365. Let us focus on the threat protection solutions in Microsoft 365. It is a complete solution that covers devices, email and SharePoint, and corporate identities. Windows ATP is a threat protection service to protect Windows devices, while Office 365 ATP is a threat protection service for Office 365, and Azure ATP is a threat protection for identities. The three threat protection services provide an integrated experience. I like to think of Office 365 ATP as the first line of defense, as most attacks come in the form of phishing email or an infected email attachment. If the attacker bypassed Office 365 ATP, or the attack did not come from email for example, then Windows ATP is the next level of protection. If the attack bypassed both protection services, or it did not pass through them at all, then Azure ATP can help you detect the existence of attack by detecting unusual behaviors and privilege escalations. What is unique with Microsoft Threat Protection offering is the level of integration between these products. If an attack is in a form of malicious attachment was not detected by Office 365 ATP, then Windows ATP 
can detect that this attachment is in fact a malicious code that is trying to do bad things on the Windows device. Not only that Windows ATP can detect and stop attacks from happening on that machine, but it will send the attachment file information to Office 365 ATP, asking it to block this file in the future, and to find out who received the same attachment in the enterprise, and go and delete the attachment from other recipients' mailboxes. Let us start by talking about Office 365 ATP. Office 365 ATP helps protecting your organization from malicious attacks by scanning email attachments with ATP Safe Attachment feature and scanning web addresses or URLs in email messages and Office documents with ATP Safe Link feature. Even if the URL inside an email message is pointing to a document to evade detection, Office 365 ATP will take the document and send it to the ATP Safe Attachment feature if you configure the service to do so. Office 365 ATP works with email messages and with SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. So files you upload there will be inspected with Safe Attachments also. Office 365 ATP can also check email messages for unauthorized spoofing with spoof intelligence feature and can detect when someone attempts to impersonate your users with ATP anti-phishing capabilities in Office 365. Office 365 ATP is a must-to-have feature for any enterprise or business that is using Office 365 and worried about security. And it is part of the Office 365 E5 licenses, or it can be purchased alone. You do not even need to do complex configuration to make all this magic happen. It is so simple to configure and the business benefits are definitely high. Let me now talk about Windows Defender ATP. Windows Defender and Windows Defender ATP provides a complete solution to protect your Windows endpoints. We have Windows Defender Smart Screen, Windows Defender Endpoint Protection, and Windows Defender Endpoint Detection and Response. With Windows Smart Screen, you can block low reputation web downloads and malicious website. So if a user accidentally or intentionally browse to a malicious website, you can block that website to protect your users. Same applies for web downloads. Windows Defender Endpoint from the other side will help protect your Windows box from malicious programs and quickly terminate bad processes. The extra step that I want to focus on in this session is the Windows Defender Endpoint Detection and Response, which will help you in detection and remediation. It is an after-execution solution to monitor post-breach signals, and then do whatever actions needed to remediate and reverse the damage. It is like there is someone watching if there is unusual behaviors happening on that machine that might be related to a breach, and then taking actions to stop and block that attack before further damage happens. And the new way of defending against attacks is by utilizing the power of the cloud and the intelligent security graph in Microsoft. You know, Microsoft Intelligent Security Graph provides rich signals from vast security intelligence, machine learning, and behavior analytics that Microsoft allow you to consume and to use to enhance your protection and detection speeds. So when Windows Defender encounters a new file that it does not know if it is a bad or good file, it sends a file query to the cloud. If the cloud knows about this file, it will provide a feedback to the endpoint, else it will ask for a sample. The client will hold the file and upload the sample to the cloud. The cloud services will process the sample and check against machine learning classifiers, trying to find out whether the file is good or not. And then if the file turn out to be holding a malicious code, it will generate a new signature to that file and sends it back to the client along with other clients so that when they encounter this file, they already know that this is a bad file and block it immediately. And you might be asking, does this mean the client needs to consult the cloud and wait for an answer? And what if there is no internet connection at that time? Well, here is how things are designed. Each Windows Defender client has a local machine learning models and behavior-based detection algorithm so that it can use that logic offline without consulting the cloud. This operation takes only milliseconds. The client can consult the cloud services by sending only metadata so that the cloud can use metadata-based machine learning models to determine if the file is malicious or not. This also takes milliseconds. If the cloud requested a sample, 
then sample analysis based machine learning models are used in the cloud which might take seconds in certain scenarios detonation based machine learning models can be involved which might take minutes and big data analysis can take up to hours what this means is that the client will not wait for minutes and hours if the file is infected and the cloud could not determine it is a bad file in seconds then the client will allow the file to run in the background the cloud will continue working and analyzing and might do detonation based ml models and big data analysis to get the truth about that file so other clients can be notified and updated although we lost patient 0 in the process here is a nice poster for windows defender atp showing all the features that it provides along with the link to download this poster Windows Defender ATP can detect zero-day attacks and the most complex malware including polymorphic and metamorphic malware threats. Finally, there is Azure ATP. It is scary that Advanced Persistent Threats or APT usually maintain access to victim networks for almost a year. That is, it takes the company a year to detect they are being hacked. 60% of attackers are able to compromise organizations within minutes. Can you imagine that? This means there is a clear problem in detecting attacks happening in organizations. So if we know how attacks are happening and the techniques attackers use to carry on their attacks, then we might learn the signals to look for when detecting attacks. Make sense? It all starts with zero-day or brute force attack on a machine inside your network, and the user account for that machine is compromised. The attacker then will try to learn about the resources in the network, and will do lateral movement using different techniques like pass the hash or pass the ticket, until the attacker compromises a privileged account that he uses to access or steal sensitive information or even bring the whole network down. Now that we know how attacks work, we can clearly see the anatomy of such attack. It includes anomalous user behavior, unfamiliar sign and locations as the attacker is moving from machine to machine and performing lateral movement. At one time, the attacker will escalate his privileges and impersonate accounts. So let us hire Michael. He's a new security expert that will help us detect attacks inside our network. The first thing Michael will do is to try to learn who is working in this building or network. Who are the users, groups, and computers that are connected to the network? After that, Michael will try to identify sensitive accounts that attackers are going after. He can quickly classify that the schema admin, domain admin, backup operators, you know, those are sensitive accounts. But he will also ask his manager to manually identify what he considered as a sensitive account. This might be the CEO account or CFO account, for example, as they can access sensitive information that attackers are going after. Next, Michael will try to study the environment by creating a file or profile for each user, computer, and group in the company. Let us take Alice, for example. Michael will create a file for her with all her information, like when her account got created, who is Alice Managers, who reports to Alice, the authentication activity log, like when she logged on on the network and from where and what device, uh, is she considered a sensitive account or not. Michael will create a file for each user group and device in the network. And this is the discovery and learning phase that Michael will go through in the first couple of months, perhaps. Now that Michael has a file and profile for everyone in the network, he will start studying the behavior for everyone. For example, Michael knows Kit, the HR manager in the company. He knows his working hours, who he works with, and what devices he uses. If Michael finds out unusual behavior when it comes to Kit account, then Michael can assume there is an attack happening using this account. Such unusual behavior signals might be many failed login attempts, logon uh, at unfamiliar times, accessing unfamiliar resources like if Kit account is trying to authenticate to the financial file share, which is unusual activity from Kit because he is in the HR department or if his account is logging from unfamiliar machines. All those signals might mean one thing. 
his account is compromised and there is an attack happening using pass the hash for example or pass the ticket techniques using kit account but sounds like there is a lot of work for michael to do for himself well azure atp or azure advanced threat protection is a way to automate michael's job it's a way to automate all that you deploy an agent on your on-premises domain controllers or an a gateway that is configured with port mirroring and then these logs and windows events are sent to the azure atp cloud service azure atp agents perform level 7 deep packet inspection not only does it see a kerberos authentication message but it can inspect that packet to identify what spns are being used in that kerberos session what user is requesting a ticket and what encryption keys are being used next phase is to analyze and learn about this environment and then detecting abnormal behaviors and suspicious activities an alert and email notifications can be triggered when azure atp detects an attack and the azure atp portal will show an intuitive attack timeline to give you all the information you need to investigate what is happening inside your network if the attack involves one or more machines with windows atp installed on them then you can see some insights from windows atp right from within azure atp portal thanks to the integration between azure atp and windows atp now let us switch gears do you remember back then when all your important assets are protected by top of art firewalls ids ips devices and even vpn access controls in place you simply have full control on the network switches and what users can access as you control their devices you are simply in control but now companies are moving gradually to the cloud whether it is office 365 azure services or any other SaaS application and they are doing that from the public internet that you do not have control over and since these services are available from the internet then users can do that from any devices and from anywhere this means that it is time to think about a new defense in depth technique as traditional security perimeters are no longer effective alone i like to think of defense in depth from the perspective of four entities you have a user or identity who is using a device to access an application and read or consume data four things to consider four things to protect so any defense in depth technique in this cloud first mobile first world we are living in should provide identity and access controls to all these four entities it starts with an identity or user the risks we are trying to mitigate here is compromised identities and stolen credentials our defense techniques at the identity level can be implementing azure atp to detect identity unusual behaviors azure identity protection to assign a risk to users and sessions or implementing azure mfa or multi-factor authentication to provide stronger authentication next we have the device level the device that is the user is using here we have many management and security solutions from microsoft like the configuration manager the intune mdm and mam policies and even a hybrid management model where a windows device can be managed using both Intune and SCCM at the same time. Windows 10 devices can now be joined to Azure AD and managed by Intune, which provides a new security and management offering from Microsoft, along with Windows Hello for Business for stronger authentication. And finally, Windows Defender ATP can be used to protect the endpoint, as explained earlier. Now that we have a user who is trying to access an application using a device, if these applications are using Azure AD for single sign-on, then you can use Azure Active Directory Conditional Access as your first identity-based cloud firewall. Once again, this is a cloud-based identity-driven firewall. Here, you can specify conditions like who are the users trying to connect and what applications they are trying to connect to what is the compliant state for the devices they are connecting from? Are they connecting from inside your corporate network or from the public internet? And what is the risk score for that user? 
all those conditions can help you decide whether you want to allow access, deny access, require the user to do MFA for example, or even limit access to the application, like the ability to prevent users to download documents from SharePoint Online if they are connecting from non-domain joint device or uncompliant device. Azure AD can do more here, as it can help you to do single sign-on with many SaaS applications, and it helps you deploy an effective self-service password reset features to your users, so that they can reset their own passwords and do group management and register for MFA. Another layer of security here is Microsoft Cloud App Security, or CAS, which helps you detect shadow IT happening inside your organization and apply policies for data control when accessing SaaS applications. Microsoft CAS, or Cloud App Security, is your application layer security, and there are a lot to say about CAS that I urge you to consider when planning your security. At the data layer, we have DLP for Office 365, mobile app policies with Intune, Azure Information Protection for labeling, classifying, and protecting documents and files, so that even if the document got leaked, it is already protected and encrypted with Azure Information Protection. I also urge you to look at Office 365 Secure Score, which will help you tune the configuration of your Office 365 deployment to enhance your security score. Office 365 Threat Explorer is also something worth looking at. It clustered attacks into campaigns and gives you, as a security admin, the ability to do action right from within the Threat Explorer console. Here are some good resources I put together for you. I highly recommend you look at them so that you can get the whole picture of how Microsoft 365 security can help you protect, detect, and respond to advanced persistent attacks. Remember this, Microsoft 365 provides advanced security services to help you protect your Office 365, Microsoft Online services, and other SaaS applications. Not only that you will get a comprehensive set of security features, the integration and data exchange between all these services put Microsoft 365 security solutions in a unique position against other non-Microsoft security solutions. I want to thank you for watching my session, and please, connect on Twitter and feel free to ask me anything. Thank you.